I worked security at this college and they had me patrol at 3 in the morning. Now I didn't mind it and the scariest places on the campus weren't awful but this one time I was definitely creeped out. The night before I decided to watch The Grudge with my buddy and that freaked me out for the rest of the day. I wake up the next morning around 2.20 am, I got dressed and went to work. When I got to the campus, the dispatcher had me patrol inside a couple of the facilities. Before I even got to the first building, I was walking and kept hearing rustling in the bushes. I looked around and saw nothing, but right as I arrived to the first building, I looked down one of the walkways between two of the buildings and saw this tall, long-haired, dark-headed individual just standing 25 yards away from me. I began to call out to see if it was just some college kid, but there was no answer. Without a second thought, I grabbed my flashlight and shined it down the corridor, but there was nobody there. I looked around for a bit, but just thought to myself I saw a shadow. I opened the front door of the first building and checked everything like usual. Because of the size of the building, I couldn't turn the lights on from anywhere close so I usually patrolled in the dark. That morning, nothing was out of place and I was able to make it out pretty good time. I would always use the elevator to get to each floor, so once I was done, I took the elevator to the ground floor did emergency phone checks on both phones and walked to my last assignment for the building. Once I finished checking the north wing of the building, I walked back to the entrance until I heard a loud bell sound come from the elevator. This noise is always rung when the elevator reaches a floor, but I previously looked at both elevators and saw that they were on the ground floor already. Without looking behind me, I straight up ran to the front doors in the lobby. Once I was safely out, I flashed my light inside the check but there was nobody there and the elevator doors were all shut. Out of all the times that I've been there, this had never happened before. While it was creepy, I still managed to keep my composure and move to the next task. Once I reached the other building, I did the same things as previously done with the other building. For this particular facility, it was a well-known fact that the inside makes noises. It was always creepy in the beginning, but you would get used to it. However, this morning was different. After I finished checking all of the exterior doors, I made a quick elevator phone check and began to walk out when I heard this loud thump from upstairs. I grabbed my flashlight and started to yell out, Hello? Multiple times, but there was no answer. At this point, I was scared out of my mind. So I make my way to the exit, but out of the corner of my eye, I see the same strange figure I saw in the walkway up top on the second floor appearing down at me. The same very tall figure with long dark hair, this time with a white gown. After seeing her, I feel my teeth start to chatter. I run out of the building all the way to the security office and report my findings. My dispatcher only shrugged it off, but I was still terrified for the next couple of hours until daylight. I worked as a security guard at a canned goods warehouse on graveyard shifts. I would usually work from 10pm to 4am or even 8pm to 4am, it all depended on my schedule. There are some moderately creepy things that go on at this place, but what stands out to me is this one time I heard a blood curdling scream that sounded like a child. I swear to anything that scream belonged to a child. I've been around a lot of kids and I've known a couple that would scream like that for fun. It's a single, loud, drawn out scream distinct enough to know that it wasn't a fox or coyote. Now the warehouse is in the middle of nowhere, and when I say the middle of nowhere I literally mean about 15 miles or so away from any civilization. I hear foxes and coyotes calling out there all the time, and they sounded absolutely nothing like this. My blood ran cold and I immediately called the police. I went into the company vehicle and started patrolling around the place. I couldn't quite pinpoint the sound because the place is a concrete jungle and there are dozens of trailers there so the acoustics make it hard to pinpoint where any sounds come from. I looked between the trailers and inside the empty ones. The empty trailers are always open so I can always patrol and check them for animals or the occasional homeless person. There was absolutely nothing. I drove over the curb and into one of the fields to do a quick check before the officers came. Two police cars show up and there was four officers and a canine. They asked me what had happened and what I had heard, and also asked where the sound came from. I told them as much as I could, and they went out into the fields and did a search while I patrolled the perimeter of the warehouse. After about an hour or so of searching, we met back at the guard shack. The cops said they couldn't find anything, but they gave me a direct number and told me to keep in touch if I were to hear or see anything. What I saw in the security cameras when I watched the footage sticks to me. Shortly before I heard the scream, which I documented to be at 3.15, I saw a small shadow of movement in the very corner of one of the cameras at 
It was just right outside the blind spot, and sadly, there wasn't any more angles that I could see. It could very well have been an animal, or the shadow wasn't enough to make certain of what it is, but the experience kind of stuck with me. I often wonder if what I saw on the camera and heard that night was a ghost, or if that genuinely was a lost girl or boy. I looked to see if there was any missing children in the nearby towns, and there wasn't any, and my boss told me that I wasn't the only one who's heard a child scream. There were even other reports other than mine of a child's laughter and tiny running footsteps in the trailer yard at various times of the day and night. Usually when the warehouse is closed and on breaks, when the trailer fetchers aren't moving trailers around and when there are no trucks driving around the place. I called one of the officers about the shadow in the camera, but when he came over to look, he said that the shadow could have been anything, and since it was such a small piece and so brief, he just chalked it up to being an animal or a bug on one of the yard lamps. Either way, I know what I heard that night, and it really creeps me out. I've worked security on and off for several years to supplement my income, so I've heard quite a few creepy stories from coworkers. Probably the most legitimately scary story I've heard was from a guard that was working in a closed down arena. The building is more than 100 years old, but hasn't been used since the early 2000s. The city is keeping up with basic maintenance as it waits for a buyer. There's usually one guard assigned to the building. It's a 6,000 seat arena with a huge basement and two additional floors that have lots of old office spaces, dressing rooms, and separate smaller community theater type stages that are upstairs. The usual guard is doing his rounds through the building. The building itself is very interesting, as it's largely unchanged since the heydays of the 70s and 80s. The upper floors are largely dark and are pretty creepy. Anyway, the guard is doing his normal rounds but feels unnaturally creeped out. It's his normal post but something feels different today. He's feeling jumpy but shakes it off and continues. He's a very diligent guy so he walks every floor of the building. He's on the very top of the catwalk system above the main arena where the old spotlighting equipment was. It's a very narrow wooden catwalk system that runs above the whole arena. Suddenly, he hears a loud creak behind him, like someone is walking. He spins around and sees a guy standing there. The guy is frozen mid-stride like he's been tiptoeing up behind him. The guy has an unsettling looking smile on his face and a big steel pipe in his hand. The guard pulls his gun and the guy takes off running in the opposite direction and disappears into the building. The cops come and sweep the building with a canine but don't find him. They do find that he's been playing in the dust that's on top of the old concession counters. He has written a bunch of bizarre helter-skelter type unsettling rhymes and drew a bunch of stick figures hanging from nooses. The speculation is it was some crazy homeless guy that had been hiding in the building a few days and had made a game of following the guards without them knowing it. I saw the writing still on the counters the last time I was there. Definitely some creepy stuff. 